Well, there's a lot of paintings now in this exhibition. A lot of the earlier work. Uh, and uh, I didn't know this was going to be there until just recently. But uh, it covers a lot of my life, actually. Um, it covers a lot of uh, things before I went to LA, then 1964 when I first went there, uh, and uh, it's, it seems quite comprehensive to me. Um, I've always been on a kind of quest, I suppose. Uh, I mean, one thing has followed another, I thought, quite logically. But uh, some other people didn't think so, but I did. Um, and I think the pictures are self-explanatory, really. They're uh, always of something real in the world. Uh, I'm always saying we should look at it. Uh, to enjoy it, and enjoyment is uh, probably a main theme. Uh, the catalog looks very beautiful to me, very beautiful indeed. I love the way it's been done uh, with bleeding pages, uh, right to the edge, that is, sometimes, other times not. But it gives uh, great variety, and uh, I think that's what my art shows. Uh, I've always painted on the whole what is around me. Right at the moment I'm in Normandy uh, painting this. I did a great big work that's in this exhibition a whole year in Normandy, which was based really on the bio tapestry, which is a work from uh, 1066, and uh, it, uh, it's one of the oldest European works still reasonably intact and uh, it's not that far away from here and uh, when I first went there in well I first went there in 19, about 1967 but uh, I haven't been then for 50 years, and when we went in 2018, I uh, immediately 
thought of doing something from it. And, uh, but it took me two or three years to do it. Uh, I couldn't have done it straight away. I had to get to know the landscape and things here. I had to uh, get to know the trees and the seasons. And uh, in 2020, I made 220 uh, iPad paintings of the year in Normandy and uh, it was from these that I constructed this scroll. Well, it is like a Chinese scroll or a Japanese scroll. Uh, Japan has had a big influence on European art, of course, uh, because of the prints uh, that were, I was told, wrapped they used to wrap them in porcelain or something when they sent them here. Uh, but uh, uh, people collected them. Van Gogh had a lot of them. Uh, and uh, uh, they must have looked in the late 19th century very abstract, really, uh, because they don't use shadows or reflections. Uh, I don't think many Europeans notice that when you get a bridge in a Japanese print, you never see the reflection. Uh, why is that? Well, partly because they didn't want, they thought the reflection was nothing really, probably. The shadows are nothing. They're just the absence of light. And uh, uh, I think uh, it's a very, quite exciting time now, for me anyway. Um, uh, and thank, uh, this is thanks to the Japanese, yes. There's some things in the show uh, with a direct influence of Japan. <coughs> For instance, the um, Ryonji Garden in uh, Kyoto, the Zen Garden, which I photographed with a tiny camera. And uh, what I did was photograph from the top and then came downwards to my feet. And I knew I had to take more photographs at the top of it than at the bottom of it because cameras have perspective built into them and uh, but and it meant counting little pebbles and things because 
when you just get to just pebbles, you had to realize what the pebble was at the bottom of your previous picture you'd just taken and you weren't seeing these straight away. I had to uh, put them all in an envelope and I didn't put them together again until I got back to LA. But I thought I had made a representation of it without perspective. It was a rectangle, like the garden is rectangular. Uh, it didn't go like that. And uh, I, it got me quite excited that. Uh, uh, this was about 1982 or 3, I think. Uh, we'd gone, I think, to a paper conference, I think. I remember someone putting into my hand a little bit of paper and they just put it in my hand and closed my hand. And when I opened it up later, it just had embossed on it, love life. <laughs> well, that's what I've always done, really. Uh, it was a marvelous little thing to have given somebody. Uh, I don't know whether they gave them out to a lot of people, probably, uh, because it was a very touching uh, thing to do. Very nice. Um, I'm sorry I can't come to Japan, but I've been told really not to fly that much and it's a long, long way. So I'll just stay here and paint. And uh, so I'm, I'm still painting away. I'm now painting the spring. I'm going to I might do, I might do the whole year. <laughs> Please leave a message for everyone in Japan, particularly young people. Well, uh, my only real message is be yourself. Uh, find out what you love doing and if you love it it will come across and it will uh, or you, you'll have a happier, reasonable life <coughs> if you if you uh, if you enjoy your work. I enjoy my work enormously. I wouldn't know what to do if I didn't work, really. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I always, I've always had enough money to do what I wanted to do every day. And this is even when I didn't have that much money. Um, from about, oh, 1962 or 3, <coughs> when I found out I could <coughs> paint 
and make a living at it, <coughs> I was thrilled, really. And so I set out on, <coughs> on, <coughs> on my life's work. But you have to be yourself. And that's my advice for everybody, everybody, including the young and old. Yeah.